newsletters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And, of course, the Fed has come out. And this morning, I looked on the Fed calendar sheet. And it said they weren't having a meeting. And uh, now I just see that there will be a meeting, or at least they just said there will be a meeting. I hope they're not confused. But, man, they can't keep it straight. Anyway, uh, if you believe CNBC, uh, there will be a Fred Press announcement in our, our soiree, Dog and Pony, uh, at uh, 2.30. So we've got, what, about uh, 24 minutes to wait. But uh, maybe someone can confirm that in the den. But uh, I checked it this morning. It didn't have an asterisk next to it saying that there would be a press event. I don't know what has changed, but uh, we'll get to, to the bottom of that. Uh, certainly, you can give me a call today at 877-927-6648. Not much of a reaction to leaving rates unchanged. They'll be patient, which means they're not going to raise them again probably until uh 2020 maybe the fall of 2020 uh the question is whether or not they would drop uh rates to keep the economy going um i read the blurbs the headlines i didn't see anything in there that made me think that they were going to drop any rates anytime soon i suspect through the election they are uh flat so uh i don't think that there's uh we're midsummer now um uh, They've got the rates up a little bit. Uh, they'll probably right after the elections start firing them up, if not right before the elections, um, start moving them higher. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe they think by the time they get into that September, October time frame that the elections, they won't affect the elections. They'll be able to go on. We'd have to have probably four and a half or five percent growth, I think, for them to raise rates. Now, they probably would like to see them uh, grow a bit, maybe get a little bit of inflation, and then start tightening the noose instead of trying to get in front of it. And, of course, the old saying in the stock market is you react to uh, stuff, not try to forecast it. And uh, I don't know. It seemed to me like uh, the, the forecast should have been in 2015 uh, when they started, should have brought up rates a quarter of a point every six months or maybe every year. Just bring them up a little. Trying to do it all at once. I don't understand this whole, we've got to tighten for the next two year thing, but I'm not a Fed guy. I'm not inside. I'm not uh, part of the Illuminati that runs the world. I just uh, merely float on its, uh, what would you call it? Uh, the uh, tides. Uh, the tides or the currents. The currents. That's what I do. So uh, not a lot happening, not a lot here. Uh, we did have earnings last night, and uh, going through Apple earnings, in fact, uh, I guess we'll bring the chart up here rather early. Uh, a PPL here. Um, you had a nice gap up. You're right where this thing get down back on the 2nd of November. Uh, that really started to move all the way back down to 142. That uh, day had 91.3 million shares. You're into that with about 42.6 million shares. Now, to me, everybody that's been a, a, a kind of a nitwit has been shorting Apple on the way up. And I think for a great deal of reason, that's why it's gone up. Um, don't understand shorting a company with 205 million or 200. 55, 
$255 billion that can buy shares back at any time and screw your short trade over, because it's no longer about whether or not the financial conditions either improve or uh, uh, don't improve for Apple. It's all about having a giant pile of cash that they can go to war with you, the shorter, at any time. Uh, one of the reasons why I don't like shorting Goldman Sachs or Merrill Lynch or any of the other uh, weasels of Wall Street. Hey, I like that. Weasels of Wall Street. That kind of sings, doesn't it? Uh, that's because they can come out and have a bunch of other people upgrade them. They do it for others. Others will do it for them. They just call them and go, you know what? You need to tell us everybody why Merrill Lynch is just turning uh, lead into gold. And you'll get uh, a handful of articles and they'll run the shorts out of it. And Apple, uh, the problem is that everybody on Wall Street uh, in a big fund owns Apple. And so it doesn't really do you any good to go. They ever say don't fight the Fed? Um, probably a good thing is not to fight Apple. But uh, the earnings, uh, very uh, extremely average, let's put it that way. Barely made the numbers. Uh, but you know what? If they bought shares last night, as soon as the earnings call came out, it's not illegal. How do we know that they're not spending those billions on earning calls night uh, to game the system? Um, I, You know, if I saw anything or if I would change anything the stock market rules it would be not that they can't buy shares back but they would actually have to disclose them on a daily basis so you know whether they were buying them back and how much um, one of the unspoken big lies and that everybody screams about is how much money is spent on buybacks apple did spend some this quarter but the the reality is that on wall street over the last 20 years of the announced, and it hadn't really changed in the last couple of years either, of the announced billions of dollars that we get every quarter on authorized fund buybacks, uh, only about 15% of that money is ever spent. It is the giant stick uh, for keeping shorts out of your business. And uh, Apple wields that well, uh, but again, um, you short the weak. And weak people don't have $250 billion to go to war with you. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, attacking somebody that has uh, a lot more to lose than you do and a lot more dollars that they can potentially lose. But I don't understand it. Uh, AMD was another one on that, uh, particularly uh, mediocre earnings. Uh, and not surprised because these guys don't have – the war chest at Apple, that it opened up a little higher and sold off rather plainly. And that's kind of a tale of two stocks today as we wait for uh, everything going on. Anyway, up six points on the S&P cash. Not surprisingly, volume is fairly uh, lighter so far. Uh, we will probably get a great deal more. The dollars peak back down right a hair under 97 bucks. And... Uh, of course, we've got more earnings after the bell tonight, so we'll get you ready, but we've cleared one hurdle, and we've got some more, and we're going to talk about that in the next segment after Histoire. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And, uh, oh, we need to uh, get to a little history if I can actually click these buttons anymore. Uh, and that's what I will do as soon as I start the little, oop, start the little history update. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Well, history doesn't repeat as much as it rhymes. On this day in 1941, months before its release, Orson Welles' landmark citizen film, uh, Citizen Kane began generating huge controversy uh, that they wouldn't show it. Um, of course, it is a thinly veiled movie that came out on this day in 1941, uh, just ahead, of course, uh, the World War II brought to you by the Germans and the Japanese. Uh, anyway, it is a thinly veiled uh, kind of history of uh, Mr. Hearst of the Hearst newspapers. Orson Welles was a very good friend of his for a number of years. That friendship ended, I'm trying to remember exactly, was it 1937, 1938 ish? Uh, when, uh, depending on who you listen to, uh, Mr. Uh, Hess shot and killed uh, somebody on his boat. And uh, apparently Orson Welles was there, a bunch of other folks. Uh, they were. Uh, for some fairly moralistic uh, people, especially for uh, Hearst and his newspapers, um, kind of openly ran around with a girlfriend uh, along with another actor. And uh, apparently, at least the way that Orson Welles said later uh, in life, uh, Hearst thought he was cheating with another actor that was on the boat. Uh, they all had big cruisers uh, back then. I think his was like 108 foot. That was 1941. Or, of course, he had more money than Carter had pills. Uh, but, of course, uh, spoiler alert, what is it, 80 years later, 60 years, 80 years later, uh, almost 80 years later, Rosebud, the last line delivered in the movie, uh, was supposedly... Uh, the reason that uh, Hearst was so mad, he used all his newspapers to make sure no one ever watched it. Uh, of course, uh, for many years, and still, other than the fact that most people have 
grown old and won't watch older movies. I uh, always thought that it was the best movie ever made, uh, especially the camera angles. Um, they kind of wigged out with that in Batman, the television series of the 60s, with all the, uh, uh, they would call them Batman after that, but uh, most of those oblique angles all came from uh, that 1941 movie and Citizen Kane and uh, the feeling of it and uh, the great acting. Uh, but uh, one of the best movies of all time, you, you certainly should take a look at it. And I think uh, that uh, Fake Books uh, CEO, uh, the uh, people that run Twitter, uh, and Mr. Bezos especially, uh, should watch this movie as a warning of what happens when a man gains the entire world but loses his own soul. Very biblical. Very biblical. Okay, now we're going to go to uh, charts, take a look at uh, the emails. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, you can call in at 877-927-6648 or pay, put a message in the den. Uh, <laughs> yeah, very good movie. Uh, and uh, just an aside, there are some very great interviews of Peter bon, uh, Bogdanovich, uh, who did, uh, what was it, uh, the Texas movie, uh, Bonnie and Clyde, a handful of other ones in the late 60s and early 70s, uh, and continued to make movies, and actually was in The Sopranos as the psychiatrist to the psychiatrist, if you remember him. He was an actor before he became a, a, a director, but... In the last year, he's done three or four major interviews, uh, and he's expounded on his, uh, he let, he had kind of like a guest home and back, and Orson Welles uh, was always in trouble financially after about the 50s uh, or 60s, and uh, let him live in the guest house as long as he would talk to him about helping him with his movies, and he did until he died, like, I don't know, 1980s, got to be 80s. Uh, but uh, fascinating interviews with uh, with uh, the man who made uh, all those great movies. Okay, uh, and as I'm waiting for it, uh, not a lot changed here. Let me update this just to make sure. We're up seven points on the S&P cash. Dow's up 60, what's called 67. NASDAQ uh, 47 and the Russell up a half. Uh, crude oil off about 44 cents. I think we're getting to the point on the right shoulder on energy, where it's going to come back into the 52 uh, area. I went out to lunch today. Uh, gas was uh, 255 or 256, past a different couple of stations. And uh, it's kind of interesting to see uh, people squealing out there in California paying five bucks. But uh, yeah, that's what you voted for. That's what you get. Okay, what else do we have out here? Uh, and we got a few bounces um, and a whole lot of earnings. In fact, why don't we go ahead and take a look at some of those of the uh, bigger earnings persuasions uh, that we had last night. And then after the segment, uh, in the next segment, we'll get to a lot. Uh, the biggest movers on earnings were Frontier Communications. Uh, they bought uh, the end of the uh, Fios net down here in Florida. Uh, man... Did they take a beating last year? No better today. Down 13%. Neighbors Industries down about 7%. Carlisle Group down about 5%. Garmin. GPSs, apparently they've lost their way, down 4%. Clorox Company down 4%. Morrison uh, Coors Brewing down 4%. Zendex down 3 Yum Brands uh, eh, not doing that well. Uh, down uh, almost 3%. And the rest kind of a whole lot of it. Oh, uh, runs. Uh, on the winner's side, Tandem Diabetes Care up uh, 11%. Uh, Akamai Technology up 8 uh, as, uh, let's call it 8%. Groupon up 7%. CVS Healthcare up 5%. Apple up 4.5%. Uh, Royal Caribbean up 4%. Twilo up uh, almost 4%. Uh, Scott's Miracle Grow, my choice in the weed business. Because uh, it's illegal, and uh, it uh, actually 
does my thing where I say you want to buy the stocks uh, that are around the questionable operation. You don't want to buy the questionable operation. As in gold miners of the uh, uh, early and late gold rushes in California and up to Alaska, you wanted to be in the picks and shovels. And of course, the biggest business still running, the gene business for making clothes that uh, miners could wear all day long. Those are the ones that last. Those are the ones that made the most amount of money. 95% of the people went broke going for gold. Guess what? The gold is in the ground now. Another gold rush. But guess what? I think Scott's Miracle Grow, man, that's the one to be long term. I think everybody's going to have a victory card in their back. And uh, states think are going to make a money on marijuana may end up with bird in hand. Bird. What? 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 The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TF and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And uh, John from Philadelphia has put in the den. Effect of May 2nd, 2019, the committee directs the desk to roll over at auction the amount of principal payments from the Federal Reserve's holdings of Treasury securities maturing uh, each calendar month that exceeds $15 billion. Um, now, I'm going to say, uh, John says that it's now $35 billion per month, but it was $30 billion per month. Doesn't it bring that down to $15 billion per month? That's the one of the hazards of actually bill, uh, being on the... Uh, 
error. It's hard to actually figure all this stuff out. Um, yeah, so you'd be down to 15. So it's actually cut in the bonds, and uh, that may actually help out uh, at taking a little money out of the, uh, or taking less money out of the market right now, if I read that correctly. Um, I Yeah, now some people think it, you add those two. I'm going to read it again. Uh, directs the desk to continue reinvesting in agency mortgage-backed securities. The amount of the principal payments from the Federal Reserve's holdings during each calendar month. I read that that they're pulling. They're not. They're going to take that 15 and roll it back over in more bonds. So they aren't just pulling that money out of the market. But uh, no, I'd say, I'd say it's actually 15. Uh, yeah. I, read it 15 to the better uh, for the market. Uh, and that just means there's going to be less bond supply. And it may be because they put, actually, I think, put too much on. Now, one of the things that you instantly want to do is look at the TLT, see how it reacted, see if we had any kind of big movement on that, because you probably should have if it did. So you're up a buck. So I think I think that actually tells you that, that uh, that's good for the markets. So we shall see. But that's an interesting read. Not much movement in the actual S&P so far, but that should do it. Now, of course, we've got some other reasons, as I talked about uh, in the opening monologue of things going on. Uh, we finally have a date now for the uh, Uber IPO. That is the 10th. Uh, so expect everything that they can throw uh, at the market uh, this is the last big IPO probably of the year. Uh, there's a bunch of smaller ones coming out. We talked about Slack and how I like the company, but I'm not exactly sure if I like the stock. Uber uh, is a uh, dubious business proposition at best at the uh, prices. Now, they did drop the uh, money that they're asking for it as it goes out the door last week rather significantly think by about 25%. Uh, that tells you that probably there wasn't the appetite. It certainly brings the price down significantly. Uh, that may still be um, another 25% too high for me. I don't understand buying IPOs that are priced with 10 years of growth in it. Um, as I said before, uh, you want to kind of look at the future like you're driving in fog you think that you can see a lot farther than you than you actually can. And uh, the amount of companies that don't make any money while they're private, that then make money when they're public, is small. Facebook being an exception, uh, not the rule. Generally, they're a lot more like Angie's List, where if they didn't make money for 10 years, they ain't going to make money now once they go public. That's generally the rule, uh, Facebook being the exception. Now, some of these uh, have put all the money back into their business. That's why they've lo uh, uh, lost money. And, you know, when you go back into the books, you can look at the free cash flow and see exactly what's happening and if they actually would make money if they weren't growing so fast and throwing it back at business. Uh, and, uh, and somebody actually told me something like that the other day. Well, but Amazon did it. Amazon did it. And I kind of feel like... Uh, watching Ferris Bueller, where they all say, uh, they all think that they can get away with it because Ferris can get away with it. When they're just not that cool or slick or loved, some people can just get away with a lot. Uh, he was able to do a lot with it because, of course, the market crashed right after it hit 100 bucks and it took it down to 10. Everybody wrote him off for dead. Uh, he basically was able to consolidate power in the company and keep investors at arm's length until he could turn the thing around. Uh, most companies went bankrupt. But again, the exception to the rule is that a stock drops 90% and then comes back. Uh, even to match that previous high is rare, probably less than 25%. Um, so you'd have to be fairly confident of buying uh, Amazon in 2001 or two at about uh, 10 bucks, uh, pretty, pretty rare. Same thing with Apple, uh, except Apple made a wonderful 
and beautiful chart pattern uh, at uh, about $6.57 split adjusted back there in 2000. I want to say it's March or May of 2003 or four. I think it was 2003 uh, when uh, he finally got the money from Microsoft or got more money from Microsoft. And that went on uh, a little bit. Oh, yeah, I think, well, we've seen a, a big change uh, after the bonds in the GLD. It's down 34 cents now after being up to 121.55. But I don't know if that really affects gold or if people are just trading to be trading here and maybe something he said during the break. Um, yeah, what else do we have? Okay, anyway, we're looking, talking about square earnings out after the bell tonight because I can't do anything about what's going on right now. Um, as EPS estimate is uh, eight cents on $937 million. You've got uh, basically um, kind of uh, lower highs and higher lows uh, over the last few months in Square. Um, I think this is one business where it's kind of maybe gotten as good as it's gonna get for Square. I haven't seen a lot that actually changed and makes this much better. Um, probably the best thing for this company right now would be for it to get a real CEO and direct Dorsey uh, to quit splitting his time between uh, trying to manipulate the press uh, with his Twitter and his other evil uh, inventions uh, and maybe try to work for good on either uh, Twitter or Square. Square a lot less uh, virtue signaling going on, a lot less uh, manipulation of free speech. Um, again, uh, they got their hands caught in the cookie jar over the weekend where they would not show a uh, disabled veteran because they didn't like what he had to say uh, and excommunicated him off the, their website. So I still think that there's a lot of baggage uh, from Square, from Jack Dorsey and Twitter uh, that this company would be much better off if it had its own CEO and uh, did, un, what would they call it? I'm not a Catholic, so I don't know. Excommunicated, that's what I'm thinking of. Uh, and that's it. Um, so we'll keep an eye on that. Okay, what else do we have going on? Oh, we're going to break. We'll go back, look at a few more stocks in a fluid motion. We're back to uh, flat on the S&P cash. Uh, probably the next move out of the market is probably going to be some kind of signal. These first fluctuations, not a whole lot. Uh, got another 30, 40 minutes with the Powell doing his dance on the catwalk. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. got some action here and some volatility down about seven almost eight points on the s p cash as we come to you now russell's up uh, one and a half points crude really hasn't moved that much dow's now just down uh, or is now down 27 so you've had a 75 point move in that we're now back down to just five a lot of movement um a little bit in gold i think that's on inflation comments uh, but again being live, I don't have a lot of time to research these things. I just have to kind of react if there's something to react to. Um, let's take a look at some of the other ones coming on tonight and see how they're doing. Uh, we talked about Square. We got Fitbit, which is one of those companies that never really quite made it with the wrist bands. Um, you know, $5 is around support. You can't really short stocks after that. There's a good handle at about 5 bucks. Uh, I wouldn't buy it pre-earnings, uh, but I would watch this. And if uh, it doesn't do much to the downside, there's a huge short interest that may develop in this one. Uh, if this thing would kind of hold out around 5, 550 after the bell tonight, after earnings, uh, and not do much, that may be a squeeze candidate if we continue to go higher. Qualcomm, of course, after making its deals with Apple, um, it had a huge gap higher, uh, continues to push higher. You've got earnings after the bell on it tonight. Uh, Maybe a little bit extended, uh, but you've got two nice huge gaps already. Uh, you make a third gap out here, and that may be it for Qualcomm for a while until it, con it uh, consolidates all these. Um, ideally, you would love for Qualcomm to come back into the low 70s, uh, after this giant candle, and uh, you never know. A lot of stuff can happen. Uh, but uh, back on light volume in the 70 to 70, 250 range, maybe as high as 75, is where you probably want to look at this if you are not long it already. Uh, to, to what else do we have? I want to look at uh, tomorrow uh, before the bell. Oop, i got to go back one now. Okay, tomorrow morning we've got uh, Under Armour. Let's take a quick look at that. UA. Okay. Come on, Mr. Under Armour. UA, right? Or UAA, I guess. I have to be better than that. Okay. UAA. I don't know why it's not bringing stuff up. Okay, Under Armour uh, through today. And it's down a little bit, down to about 22 bucks. Trading range is 1652 on the low side from the December 26 low and 25 bucks on the upside. So uh, looks to me like risk reward isn't there to be long Under Armour into earnings, uh, but certainly 25 bucks uh, to the upside. And of course, uh, Eight bucks to the downside, most likely. You got some minor support at about twenty dollars and forty-five cents from that latest March twenty-fifth low, but uh, something tells me that that's going to be hell or uh, 
heaven by the time we get done tonight. Wafer, another company that uh, I don't know what's going on with it. Seems to be another bubble uh, in the uh, dot com space. Um, we've got somebody in the den that seems to love it, probably because they're long it. Uh, but uh, it seems to me like this is another stock that was able to actually hold up and go much higher on everybody shorting it. Not so much that it had wildly good earnings. It had mildly better earnings. Uh, but seems to me uh, like a lot of the other dot-com stocks that go uh, up to heaven only to have its wings melt and it fall back into the ocean. For you people, uh, that's a spoiler from some uh, Greek stuff about 2000 BC. Uh, but uh, that's it. Uh, also in the morning, we've got Dunkin' Donuts. Take a look at that. D-N-K-N. And take a look at that as we continue keeping a close eye on uh, the rest of the market, which is already in progress. Uh, Duncan Group, you know, you tested the previous high. You did so. You went above it. You did so on significantly lighter volume than the September 11th uh, high. That was 7677 with 840,000 shares. Got into it with 530,000 shares on April 17th. You went above it, reversed right off of it, uh, and actually down a little bit in front of it. Um, these last two legs have been weak, both down and up. Uh, this does look like it could have a downside surprise in it, uh, but uh, yeah, tough to say. But uh, Starbucks, well, let's take a look at that. That's Bucks. See how it did. Okay. Uh, da -da -da. Yeah, this thing's way up here too, so uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see Starbucks sell off a bit on maybe some bad news from Dunkin' Donuts if we get it. That may be the play. Uh, if I was going to go into it, that'd be uh, for after the bell, short Starbucks. Uh, and probably not going to go very much higher uh, after the bell, but certainly uh, Dunkin' Donuts, if it got a miss, could go significantly longer, uh, lower and maybe give you a huge sell signal on Starbucks, which I think is wildly overpriced, but it has been for years and can continue on. Uh, what else do we have out here? Um, wanted to look at V&Q uh, with the news on the, on the uh, bonds. You wanted to see what happened. You had a little flag out here today. Uh, and I'm going to watch this, especially over the next couple of days, to see how this one reacts uh, to the movement uh, in bonds over the next couple of days as we unwind and unravel and unpack what the Fed actually said today about bonds. But it's going to take me a little while to figure it out. Certainly, we've got uh, eh, some lighter volume in this. It kind of looks like this is getting ready, as we said, to see a lot of uh, action in a double repo market. This is exactly what I'm looking for. The next uh, close below a three by three displaced moving average would be a giant sell signal on the VNQ. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, LGLD got down to $20.18, uh, $20.53 now, off about 68 cents. Uh, to, to, to the transportation. IYT, uh, certainly probably if we were going to go a lot higher in the near future, probably should have broken up through the $200 level uh, where it hit that on December 3rd. Instead, it well, it kind of got there and rolled over $200.42. Now back underneath it. Same thing on this one. I'm looking for all these patterns to go once more, maybe through this IB, uh, IPO season above those highs and then to roll back underneath them. And then you've got some fairly significant downsides in these. That's not forecasting it, a scenario that has not happened yet. Uh, but I think you've got a, probably a pretty good shot at the IYT at 166 on a failure, but we have no evidence of that yet. No evidence at all that it's failed yet. Just telling you if it does do that, it should. 
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And as we finish up the show, we're off four points on the S&P cash, the Dow down 22, and I don't know if they're going to spend a lot of time only uh, waiting to get the last 30 minutes of the day in to try to run the flag back up the pole. Uh, but uh, you're up 15, 16 points on the Dow. NASDAQ's up 22 again, and the Russell's now down 2.5, crude off 26 cents. So again, uh, as I said, uh, want to watch the IYT, want to watch uh, the TLT, because those are the ones making a, a move and getting jiggy. You got up to 254.45 on the TLT. Uh, you're now kind of at the low end of that range. So whatever was going on, uh, that I have to say that that news article was written poorly on what they're doing with the bonds. I'm wondering if this uh, isn't a snap back on a poorly worded column that may have fooled uh, the automatic uh, trading machines. But you're up 61 cents still on the TLT. It's been up all day. Uh, but uh, you're probably not going to get the truth out of this uh, in a little while. It's probably going to take a while, maybe to the close or maybe even to tomorrow, to actually figure out the Fed uh, is still talking. Probably still will be for another 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, but uh, I'm sure Tom O'Brien in the next hour. We'll talk greatly about it. He's more of a Bond guy. And uh, at least uh, take a look at his uh, idea of what's happening. But uh, you know what? 
it's uh, one of those things where you have to kind of wait a little bit. It's got to go in the oven. It's got to cook a little bit. Got to percolate a little while. I don't see coffee percolators anymore. I wonder what that, why that is. Anyway, don't drink coffee was the biggest problem, so I don't know a lot about it. But we continue to see uh, a lot of it. And, of course, uh, we want to look at those volumes as they come in at the end of the day. Uh, we're doing about $4.5 billion, which is still incredibly light. Not uncommon when we still have Fed people speaking. It's that end-of-the-day volume that will matter. In the meantime, so when you can, not when you have to. See you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time tomorrow.